Hi there, this is Gordon Back, the Artistic Director of the Menuing Competition. Thank you for joining us this afternoon for the Violin Channel and Menuing Competition Festival. Today we're going to look back at our first international jump for the competition when we went to Oslo in 2010. It was quite memorable because the Icelandic volcano erupted uh, two or three days before the competition was due to start. So on the day the competition started, we had jury and competitors all over Europe trying desperately to get to Oslo. So we started two or three days late and the last violinist to arrive came via a transport plane um, into Trondheim, then had to take a three hour train ride and he had to perform with about an hour's notice in his jeans because his baggage didn't arrive. And in fact, he went on to win the first prize. So he's one of the two we're going to hear today. His name is Angelo Yang Yu. He was just 19 years old and he's from China. The other winner of the junior section was Curzon Leon from Canada. He played a wonderful performance and what I really remember was the, the first four bars of the Brahms G major sonata which were just absolutely outstanding and took your breath away. So please enjoy these two performances from the Menuhin Competition Oslo 2010. Hi Angelo. Hi Kirsten, long time no see. <laughs> long time no see, indeed. It's what been... was the last time? Definitely a few years ago. Yeah, I think probably has been like at yeah. least five, six in Boston, something Some, like something that. like that. Yeah. Oh my but god! At least I time think flies. Uh, time flies for sure. And I think like in the in the middle of quarantine, mm -hmm. you know, it's nice to see uh, some some familiar faces. Oh yes, you know? for sure. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. Uh, this is Kirsten Leung, and I'm Angelo Xiangyu, and uh, welcome to Violin Channel's Yehudi Menuhin Competition Festival. And we are, last time I checked, the winner of 2010 Menuhin Competition. Yeah. And Kirsten is the junior first prize winner. I am the uh, senior first prize winner. Um, you know, I can't believe it has been 10 years. Can you imagine? Yeah. Like 2000, 2010, 2020. I, I can't imagine that. It feels like still like yesterday because you know i could still remember many of those beautiful memories and of course the volcano eruption what was the experience for you i mean when the volcano erupted right before the competition well i mean i think just like everyone else it screwed up everyone's travel plans but also it's because of the whole drama and the whole sort of the high tension of the in the uncertainty of the whole situation i can imagine for you i think i remember that you you hitched a ride in in a cockpit <laughs> You know, yeah. to uh, and while I think uh, I I was uh, I did I think fifty something hours of train wow. and bus all the way from Frankfurt that's, to Oslo. That's yeah. amazing. I mean, that's yeah. a ride <laughs> on a train, right? Yeah, yeah. It was oh, definitely, yeah. you know, like it's so funny because I think it's because it was such a high, highly stressful, um, I guess, few days that yeah. you remember certain details whether you arriving in one train station or yeah. if you're you know that the whole chaos around you you know so many people yeah. are trying to get in and out you know you remember those <laughs> moments very clearly actually yeah you know, even yeah. even if they were just 10 years ago i think that's yeah, wonderful I mean, too. I mean it was almost like a, a a novel it's like it feels surreal to me even after 10 years when i think about this you know the when the volcano erupted like the entire europe there's no flight at all like zero and yeah. then obviously, you know, people like you could take the trains because you were already there and people from Europe could like take a ferry sometimes and yeah. train and just drive for like 10 hours, 15 hours to get to Oslo. But for me, I got stuck where it got erupted. It was Iceland, right? Oh, really? Oh, okay. And yeah, I got stuck in Iceland. So <laughs> I, 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 I stayed there for three days and I was lucky enough to find the, the former ambassador of uh, Iceland and Norway and China. So he was able to took me to his home and call his daughter who is uh, apparently a good friends of hers is a pilot in Iceland there. So got me to 
the cockpit of a flight and get to Trondheim and then eight hours overnight bus. So yeah, I didn't draw the slot, by the way. I, I was the last competitor because I mm. barely made it. So I just yeah. rushed into the, the competition. No yeah. sleeping, no practicing for like a week or something and just rushed in and played the Bach. And I believe, yeah. for some reason, I, I think I played better <laughs> without practicing. Yeah. You know, that was actually something that I was going to ask you if, uh, if somehow being in that kind of situation where, you know, all, all hope of preparation, all hope of settling in is totally out the window. Oh, yeah. You know, how does that sort of influence or how did that influence your, your mindset? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure you have, you know, a lot of experience in terms of stage fright and anxieties and we all do, right? Nobody yeah. is perfect. But, you know, in that moment, I'm just so grateful that I made it. You know, and then all the other things are just not even my concern. I was just like, I'm so grateful to actually be able to be there and share my performance and share some beautiful music with people. And I think it was live streamed worldwide. So, yeah. you know, it was, you know, and my mom was suffering from cancer and she was able to watch that. So it was like very meaningful for me. So I think for the first time, I wasn't really nervous. And of course, the second round I, and the final, I got more and more nervous. So uh, the first round was the best. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, that's wonderful. I, I, I think I had, you know, uh, the exact same experience as you in the sense oh, that, you yeah. know, after yeah. such a, such a, I guess, such a journey and such a fright yeah. in a way mm -hmm. that uh, you just arrive and you don't think about anything else other than the fact that you're there. Oh, yeah. And that, you know, suddenly yeah. there's, you know, you're, you're kind of, there's no more uncertainty. You're you're safe. You're mm -hmm. you've arrived. But then it's like, yeah. It was also one of the times where you know one of the only times, mm -hmm. even even since then, uh, you know that uh, I wasn't nervous as well. Oh, hey, well, your first round, I remember so clearly. You know, I was um, I was going to a rehearsal with my pianist, and uh, when we passed, do you still remember the Baradou institution? Yeah, yeah. And uh, at the at the hall, there was a big screen, and you can see all the competitors from outside. And I was on my way to a rehearsal, and then all of a sudden, there is this somebody playing Bach, one o one six slow movement. Mm -hmm. Oh my God! Immediately captured my heart, and I just turned and looked at the screen. Here is Kirsten. That was the most beautiful Bach I've ever I've ever heard. And of course, I stood there and listened to the whole thing and played for the rehearsal. <laughs> Yeah, but it was so beautiful. I, I still, you know, uh, for, for those of you who hasn't seen that video, Kirsten playing Bach, it was, oh my God, it was out of this world. It was so beautiful. Please check it out, everybody. Oh. It was was really, really special. I I, I, I was really blown away. And, uh, and then you were like, what, 13? Yeah. I couldn't I believe 13. it. Oh, yeah. my God. I, I was well, like, what am I doing here? And like, what, why am I here? I was like... <laughs> oh, man. Oh, you, you yeah. flatter me. But, you know, actually... One of the things that um, I do actually even go back to once in a while, just because it was such a, I remember very clearly when you played Shimanovsky, oh. Nocturne and Tarantella. Yeah. Uh, I remember seeing that and I was just like, yo, <laughs> you know, this is, this is next level, you know? No, I mean, just that yeah. total full commitment, you know, you could tell that, that you, you really put your whole being you know, not only in that round, but like, especially in the, it really, it was so jarring in the Shimanovsky because you were just totally committed, like your whole body, your whole, you really gave a hundred percent musically oh, yeah. and it, it came across. I mean, it really it did make such a big <laughs> impression on me. And I still, I mean, that's still one of my favorite violin performances Oh, thank Ever. you. Thank actually, you. I mean, I, and then you know. actually, I, it was not so popular at that time. I don't think anyone in, you know, around me even know about that piece so mm -hmm. you know i discovered it through a great recording of yahudi menui in fact yeah early recording and i was like wow that was so beautiful okay so instead of choosing one of those classic show pieces which i actually don't have many <laughs> so i actually chose this one because it feels so special for me and to be honest if you ask me if i could repeat what i did in the competition probably not because it was that moment you know right there yeah. I, I was so like burning at that moment so yeah, yeah you're right I and mean, you know I, as we artists i think we sometimes like to live in the moments you know yeah. sometimes it may never happen again <laughs> exactly i mean and that's yeah. what i think what you know a lot of the magic moments 
so to yeah. say you know they, they come and go and they exactly you know and you enjoy them in the moment right mm -hmm. you know and every every experience sort of brings something different and in this case i think it was so maybe it was the whole combination of things you know oh, from yeah. the from the, sure. uh, the experience and, and the fact that you know uh, i think you know we were just grateful to be there grateful to play and exactly. really uh, it came across and manifested in a certain way mm -hmm. in, in our playing well that for me i would have to say is is probably um one of the one of the most striking memories i can i can wow. you're 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 shimanovsky you. and um yeah actually you know that's interesting because um what i wanted to ask you mm -hmm. is um how did you sort of come to choose a repertoire that you chose for that competition now that you mentioned that yeah i mean nowadays you can see some a lot of competitors um you know, of all age groups, they would like to choose those successful pieces, um, quote unquote. I, I feel like um, they feel certain repertoire has a higher chance of winning. Um, I'm not quite sure about that. I mean, I, I agree certain repertoire, they really have a great ending, for example, and most audience will enjoy it. And, you know, that definitely, you know, will put you in a better situation. But then I really believe that what, what's, what's really important for you is that you, you choose something that you feel most connected to. And uh, I think that's important instead of choosing something that is effective, but not necessarily your piece. Mm -hmm. Right. So I, I think when I when I listen to a lot of artists like you, obviously, when you play um, the Palladian and Allegro by Chrysler, I feel like you own the piece. I mean, I, I hear Chrysler, but I also hear you. So I think that is, a, is very important. You obviously can feel the connection between you and the composer and the piece. So I, I always choose something that I feel, you know, it's the most connected to me. I personally think Szymanowski and my personality, we have some similarities and the mm. other composer will be Mozart, you know? So, so I would always, you know, consider those options first before I move on to something else. And to your question, um, for example, you have a lot of show pieces to choose from, and there is a lot of standard show pieces like Qigong and Sarasate, you know, a lot of things you could, you, uh, you can choose from, but the problem is you probably will hear 10 out of 20 competitors playing exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. And it'll be great. Of course, you can spot a difference and to compare all the different styles. But at least, uh, you know, just imagine if you were the jury member, if somebody brought you a piece that you've never heard before or rarely heard before and played it well, I think that is more special to me. So, I mean, you know, just, just my, my little one sense, you know, that obviously yeah. there's the regulations and, um, you know, I always like to actually choose the one that is least popular, you know, if mm. you give me the choice because I feel like there is a reason why it's not being played so much. And I would like to always take the challenge of that. Mm -hmm. Like and sort of dig something up. And oh, yes. And just, just give myself a challenge. That's the yeah. whole point of going to competitions. Where it's you give yourself some sort of motivation. So even yeah. if you don't win, you still gain a lot. You know, you learn yeah. a lot. So, you know, that, that's, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah, no, that's absolutely wonderful. I, I agree wholeheartedly. Yeah. yeah. OK, awesome. shall we listen to some videos? We shall. I think yeah, we shall. Yeah. Okay. I'm just gonna get get this going here, and uh, oh, yeah. shout outs to <laughs> shout outs to all the um, you know all the music lovers, all the oh, yeah. the and music enthusiasts who will be listening into us. <laughs> yeah, uh, I okay. guess tuning uh, in. I haven't listened to myself for a very long time. Definitely, my competition videos. I I don't think I have listened to it like in the past five years. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, no. same with me. I think it's gonna yeah. be the first time. We're gonna start off, I guess, with. Uh, with the junior here. So oh, that's, yes. Uh, that's, that's Which me. is 13 and, uh, year old Kirsten Leong playing yeah. Tsigona Weissen by Sarasate. Yeah. I remember I think, that performance. It was so great. Oh, my the God. sad thing, I think, is, is that I don't think I've grown much since then. So, oh, come <laughs> on. musically, you are, you are a giant right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. think so. But uh, yeah, no, so let's, uh, let's, let's get this going. Okay. All right. Virtual audience, we are. <laughs> yes, exactly. How, how most comfortable. Oh my god, so <laughs> cute. Look at you. Oh my god. Wow. I think you already won. Like, 
by standing there. Yeah. All I remember was that, uh, well, actually, all I remember from that particular was that I met, I I screwed up the first opening run at the I, at the. I, I don't I don't remember that. I was <laughs> there. It's a very in personal Williams. touch. It was a very individual interpretation of that. <laughs> Forget the earlier ones, but you know, th th that's just pure talent right there. No matter if you're the first or or last, yeah. I think what was interesting is that I think I was just so pumped up. I remember being really pumped up for this. Oh yeah, you and, 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 look pumped well, up. <laughs> yeah, I was definitely. I was like, yeah, you know, I was uh, amassing all the all the energy of the situation, you know, the atmosphere, just feeding off of it. So even Such like a little piece. Absolutely. Could you guess when I learned this? Uh um, give you two chances. Uh, when you were uh, Alright, I'm gonna I'm gonna go very extreme contrast with my two guesses. I guess eleven. Eleven? You're kidding me? Eleven? I think I learned how to play meditation. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> okay, one more guess. All right, let's see. Seventeen. Close. Close? No. All right, I was close. Okay. Uh, I learned this year. <laughs> I'm, 20, I'm, I'm 32, by the way. I, I'm turning 32 at the end of this month. <laughs> But in a way, I mean, sometimes that actually could be really interesting because then you're like you're coming fresh into a piece with already, I guess, you know, a very well developed musical personality, and sometimes that can be very interesting. You wouldn't believe me. I thought it was very difficult. It was really, really hard. But I mean, it's different when you talk when you think about different angles. But it was not easy, you know. Mm. But I appreciate the fact, you know, certain pieces if you learn it later. Actually, it's a different perspective. I always relearn a lot of like Bruch Concerto. I relearn, yeah. I don't know, four or five times you know, in different yeah. stages in my, my life, my career. Absolutely. You know, it actually takes, I mean, I'm sure it's, it's the same case with you, but I think it always takes so much more effort to relearn a piece than to learn a new piece. Exactly. Staccato, oh my god, how did you do this? I, I don't know how to do that. Like, how did you do that? My maximum would be Sibelius, uh, third movement. That's my max. I can't do faster than that. I've, uh... And all that slide, as a 13 year old, you're, you're kidding me. I was a slide with guy. style. I, Look I at that. Pretty, yeah. Oh my god, so juicy. <laughs> I guess I was pretty already pretty suave by the end. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at oh. that slide! Oh my God, so gypsy! <laughs> that was nice. I love it. Oh, look at that! So, so <laughs> So did you have your like, facial expression? <laughs> How can you not love this this man, this boy? Oh my god. Oh. Oh, the cameraman actually did a great job. Yeah. I definitely know that they they know what needs to be filmed and what kind of you know. 
That's amazing. I think slide is one of the most important things to show your artistry. I mean, yeah. I, I find that it's so hard to teach. And maybe it was not even possible to fully understand or convey that to your students. And for me, it was very difficult. It's a very, it's an incredibly personal thing. Yeah. You know, yeah. Portamenti and slide. I always feel like I, I'd like to imitate all the great masters, Milstein, Heifetz, Eilman, Christ, but when I was little, I kind of imitate everyone, and at the end, it's no one, so it's your own, so I think it definitely helps if you listen to some old masters. I'm still very old-fashioned. Oh, for sure, I think we both grew up uh, listening to the 20th century, you know, the, the old guard, you know. That's my favorite moment. That Absolutely. Be... What violin is that, by the way? I believe it was in, in Austrian. Oh, yeah. It looks pretty old. It looks pretty old. Yeah, it, uh, it definitely, <laughs> it definitely looked the part. Um, it, I think it was a Geisen Hoff or something. Oh. And, uh, it projects really well in a hall, actually. I remember it being a very sweet sounding fiddle. Uh, I, I, I think you can. I think it comes across quite well. Quite well. I mean, in that space, which is yeah. very brilliant. I mean, uh, I, I remember sitting in all the back. I hear all the little notes, which is very difficult. Mm. Oh, look at that face! Look at that eyebrow! Oh, oh, oh my God! Were you aware that you were doing that? <laughs> no idea, man. <laughs> yeah. For the longest time, I mean, facial expression just came, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't something that I was totally aware of, even though now I think that. I have a theory on, on facial expression. <laughs> I can't help. I do that all the time. And I, Oh, and that little eyebrow. Oh, that pulse too. I'm so I think this passage is very tricky here. Yeah, I see so many accidents. Like yeah. the transition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some people want slow and uh, gradually do fast. Some just go straight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, this wow. is so hard for some reason. Mm. Two, four, two, four. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's something, uh, there's always still this place that I want to freak out. Yeah. And those harmonics. How do you get that so perfectly? one of the moments I feel like it's not that hard but sounds pretty hard yeah. and sometimes if it's pretty hard it sounds so easy <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah but you know by, by, by this point of the piece my hand is usually like, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, good. It's, yeah. <laughs> let's speed up oh. <laughs> oh my god that was amazing person yeah that was Really, really spectacular. Oh, it's, been, uh, it's been a while since I've seen that video. It's yeah, I think to... it was so funny. I think uh, the final uh, of junior was what the day before the senior. Yeah. And um, and my host asked me, "Why are you not practicing?" I said, "No, I wanted to look at others." <laughs> but aren't you not supposed to look at you know your rivals? Was, oh no, it's junior. It's it's fine. <laughs> I remember that. So, yeah, it was so funny. Oh no, bravo, Chris! That was, oh, thank you. I haven't. I mean, I I remember myself looking at that video all over and over and over again, even though I was there 
you know, in the audience, but uh, it was just, I, I never get tired of it. <laughs> just, just to even look at your face, it's like, oh, so much fun. Oh, yeah. thank you. Thank you. I think uh, also that, that look of relief at the very end, you could see, it was like, <laughs> you know, yeah, no, as you said, it's just sort of, you know, you start out a competition with, with, mm -hmm. with absolutely no, I really did come in, come into the competition with absolutely no expectation. That, that's you know, the especially best. with with what end it was such a of course by the final of course the you know mm -hmm. the adrenaline built up oh yeah and uh, it's different i definitely felt that release right at the end but i, yeah, I just remember being like, like so that. man yeah it was so such a release anyway let's move on to uh <laughs> to mr uh oh, Yu Xiang. <laughs> <laughs> oh i appreciate the fact you actually read my chinese name perfectly <laughs> oh well, you know. yeah <laughs> Okay, that's so, actually how I would know. I would know you as a uh, as yeah, Xiang. You that know? was oh yeah. I mean, yeah. for sure. How to say your name? Liang Qiaoxin, right? Liang Qiaoxin. I think exactly. you're. Yeah. It's spelled in Cantonese. It's like Q Sun. Q Sun. Q, Q Sun. Yeah. Q Sun. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. All okay, right. Let's now, let's do this again. Move on to the boring and old <laughs> guy. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I I was here. I was I was there. During this performance, wow. and uh, you know, I remember just was like, yeah, this Yu Xiang is the is the real deal, oh, you know. Cool. Yeah, I, I really was like, it was so exciting, oh. seriously, um, watching you play. So let's. Okay, uh, do you see the screen now? All right. Okay. Let me know if you can hear the sound. Oh. I guess we're both playing at the same time then. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Okay, so um, I'm gonna share screen. Can you see yourself? Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Oh my god, do I look very different right now? I can't believe that. Oh, I think I lost about thirty pounds at least really? since then. Yeah. Like. I don't know why. I, it, it just happens. I still eat a lot. I still eat three meals, if not four meals a day, but it just, just happened. Mm. It's strange. I would like to look like that again. But... Oh, come on. I mean, oh, actually, there's, there's, there's yeah. barely any difference between. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Now and now I definitely have some wrinkles over here. So. I, I, I can't see anything. <laughs> And, and with the cool, uh, with the cool little, little. Quick. Oh yeah, that that's a new yeah. thing. This is a new thing. Yeah, Just because yeah. my hair, you know, doesn't want to go down. <laughs> well, I just remember it so clearly because it was such a, it was such a penetrating performance. Oh, yeah. I, I think we played in different venue. This is the yes. uh, Oslo Opera House, which yes. is so difficult to project. It was huge, yes. like four levels or something. Mm -hmm. I couldn't even see the end of the hall. It was so huge. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. I think we both played gala there. Yes, we did. Yeah. There's just so much gut, like so much guts in your playing. <sighs> You know that it was really it was like a complete total investment of body oh, and yes. mind it was really it's a uh, great piece I, mean, yeah. I love the piece to, to begin with um, by the way the place i was born is not so far away from russia from um, siberia actually it was the very north of china yeah. it's called inner mongolia so oh for sure absolutely. i definitely feel the coldness yeah <laughs> it's been very interesting oh my god that did i just miss that note <laughs> You can say that I'm intentional, but it's not true. <laughs> it's so funny that I've asked to play, uh, I've been asked to play this piece the most in the past 10 years for some reason. Really? Mm. Yeah. Well, it's definitely something that you made your mark with. Yeah. You know, the Personally, I like number one a little better. I think it's, it, it has a certain character. Um, I would have to agree with you, actually. <laughs> but yeah, the, the slow movement of number two is definitely really special. I mean, oh, absolutely. It's so special. Uh, 
And this is a killer to rehearse. You know, it's so difficult. And once you miss one note, whole thing collapse. You can't find anywhere. I mean, you can't find the, the orchestra. The conductor can't help you, and they can't find you. They have no idea. Especially yeah. the coda. I think oh, it's definitely. The oh yeah, the sure. coda was like if one of, if not the most nerve-wracking coda of all concertos. I think for sure. Yeah. Even it after playing like it a... for like a hundred times, it still feels like you've never performed it before. Yeah. Okay, second time I decided on the D string just because of there's a wolf on the violin. <laughs> What was the violin you were playing on, actually? Oh, that's interesting. I think I played on a um, Carlo Berganzi II, mm -hmm. which is the grandson of the famous yeah. Carlo Berganzi. So it was very rare. And, oh, yeah. There's not so many of them left, actually. Mm -hmm. So I was lucky enough to be borrowing them. Uh, because I was actually, you know, I, I do have a Chinese violin, which Mm -hmm. Sounds like a violin, but obviously by far not as good as this one. <laughs> yeah, the, there's, the, there's the, the ripeness of it, you know, oh, the yeah. age, the, oh, yeah. the character. I like this violin a lot. I mean, it's, it has a certain resistance, you know, and it's so bright. E string and G string was like so gutsy. So, I mean, it's yeah. really oh, it's, it's perfect for uh, I mean, pretty much uh, everything. It's a very good match for you, yeah. actually. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I think by this moment, my hands are already completely wet. Yeah. I think I almost got off the fingerboard at some point. I'll, I'll let you know where. <laughs> I still remember that. I'm just trying to listen to the timpani. So hard. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, here, yeah. It's like just slipped and I was like, okay, whatever, I'll just move on. Because I know if I stop, if I just hesitate for like a split second, the whole thing will collapse. Yeah, it will collapse, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. this is not where you want to collapse. For sure, you know. But you know, the funny thing is, it's like when you're looking from an outside point of view, is that, of course, it's like those things that, you know, we feel in the... While executing the performance, we don't actually notice. We just notice the energy. Yeah, we just notice absolutely. You no, know, it's actually it's very funny. I think I went too fast. Oh my god! I think I used all my energy on the last note, but still nobody could hear me. Okay, let's <laughs> stop. <laughs> oh my god. Amazing, man. Thank you, thank you. Okay, I think our, our screen sharing was, <laughs> I I think think our screen sharing was delayed, so we probably we're yeah. reacting in different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we were like maybe like two seconds apart. It's all yeah, it's all good. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. 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 Uh, but, okay. Uh, yeah, no, uh... okay. Oh my god. Though no, I yeah, I, I remember that there was you know uh, it's it's a funny feeling because that theater barely have any reverb mm. it's completely dry because that's a you know a opera house you don't yeah, want yeah. so much echo you want the clear clarity exactly. and yeah. I, by the way it was so beautiful that that building you know for those of you you know yeah probably, it was just it was at that yeah, point just newly was so completed, new actually yeah, yeah. i wanted and to go back maybe after the pandemic it was, it was really yeah. something to, to 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 see absolutely yeah. absolutely so, so really, what, what have you been doing these years? I mean, what particularly has the menuing competition, you know, done to help your career and kind of, you know, mm, design yeah. certain paths for you? Oh, absolutely. Well, you know, I think like in this case, for me, the, the menuing competition actually was the catalyst, you know, was started the whole thing for me. Yeah. yeah. You know, not just the, the idea of career. 
mm -hmm. um, and the fact that I would be, you know, that I would potentially be a violinist, mm -hmm. but just in terms of like a whole new world of discovery, mm -hmm. you know, and of, 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 of experiences. I think for, you know, it was my first time in Europe going to Oslo I and, see. and I went into it, you know, uh, went into a competition as someone who it's not necessarily, you know, someone who, who immediately knew that they wanted to be a violinist and violence. It was, you know, mm -hmm. being a violinist was one of the things that, that interested me, even though I was quite present in, in national competitions mm -hmm. before, mm -hmm. before that time. But uh, I think that the main thing was that it really defined, it defined my whole path in this case, because I, I think it speaks to the notion that, that, you know, I guess the fortune of winning a competition is not is not nearly as much I guess an end in itself. Yeah. You know, rather the the beginning of of a much bigger and a much longer trajectory. You know, in which yeah. I guess the real test, of course, is you know being able to build up and sustain a career. Of course, and for the young ones, I mean, in this case, you know, the juniors, it's also yeah. to develop, if you know, effectively, I guess, into a into a mature, into yeah. a you know, fully autonomous, you know. Uh, artist, you know, with with conviction, mm -hmm. um, which of course also under the pressure of the public eye, yeah. and uh, you know that's just something that that uh, you know has has truly defined, I guess, the nature of the path. I mean, it was very much you know an up and down process, many yeah. low points, many high points, but also very you know a lot of low points. But that has truly defined, I guess, um, who I am now in terms mm -hmm. of my ability to to um, to really sort of, uh, I guess, focus on what's important at the moment, I you see. know, and to, to have been able to sort of learn to deal with the pressures involved mm -hmm. and to, uh, to come out of this, I guess, as, a, as someone who, yeah, um, as myself, you mm -hmm. know, I think it was very Absolutely. much a, a process of being, of coming full circle mm -hmm. in a way. And I could imagine, I mean, for, for you as well, I mean, I think, yeah, just because of the impact I feel, or personally, I feel the impact that you made at the competition. Because for me, I mean, you know, you stood out um, for just the actual strength, the, no. the, no. the the quality, and, you know, I think it, there was no doubt in my mind. At least. Oh, there, there is always, always some luck, you know, I, I, I have to say, you know, mm, yeah, you have to play really well, but opportunity at the right time, at the right moment, met the right person people and i think yeah sometimes a little bit a little bit of luck um really helped and yeah. uh, i consider myself lucky in that competition because all the other players they play really well mm -hmm. and i think <clears throat> anybody could have won and i think it really also depends on that particular performance you know um you no know, for example i am a very <clears throat> emotional player which means i'm not the most consistent player, mm -hmm. you know, you know, uh, if you ask me to play the same piece for 10 times, you will get 10 different results, which can be a good thing. It can be a bad thing for a competition, actually. Yeah. So what if you hit the, the one that, you know, was not really, really good, or you, you miss a couple notes, you have memory slips, that happens, right? What if you just happen to hit that one? Right. And yeah. it, it's really, it depends on a lot of factors. So, so I was lucky. So um, most of the performance I did in the competition was kind of my level. Um, so it didn't really go way be, below or, or, or because of the anxiety and all the nerve. Um, I didn't really make the performance in, you know, a, a, a less, you know, me or less myself per se. I think it's, it's so important to have luck and uh, same thing with career. Sometimes mm -hmm. I think it really, it's really about timing and opportunity. And uh, I mean, for somebody like you who already had such success at 13 year old winning such big competitions. And I think you still have to finish your studying and, you know, you obviously have a, a lot of engagements. I remember at that time, and I think how to balance that was very important. And for me, it's the same thing. You know, mm -hmm. I didn't really start a concertizing um, like season, uh, you know, as a seasoned soloist until, you know, maybe 2014 or 15. So it's not like right after the competition, I, I sort of just 
started off and yeah. took over. Yeah. I also felt at that time I needed the the time to focus on myself to finish my school, and、um, I still feel like I have so much so much to learn, and I don't want you know performance. All of a sudden, become the focal point of my、uh, of my life. I wanted to、yeah. to get ready, actually.、Mm -hmm. And、uh, in fact, you know, I didn't know that many concertos even. You know, I, to begin with, I didn't even know that I, I would have the chance of being a soloist. I always wanted to become a chamber musician and a teacher. As I grew up, all the way till twenty year old, and.、Um, It was my teacher, great teacher Don Wallerstein, who actually persuaded me to to try to play more solo, and、uh, I took his advice and explored all those repertoire. So、uh, you probably、yeah. couldn't even believe, or you know, whoever is watching this,、um, you know, most of my my repertoire,、uh, my concertos especially, are learned after age of twenty five. Mm -hmm. You know, and including Tchaikovsky, you know, those popular pieces. You know, it's. It's a lot of commitment, but I also say that I prefer that way. I don't want it to rush to something. I'd rather、yeah. to be ready. And、uh, and you know, for 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 somebody like you, I'm sure you you will echo with that. You know, sometimes it it it, it really takes one bad performance to ruin a career, but、mm -hmm. to build up a great career, it takes decades. I would say absolutely. You know, so I I totally、yeah. agree with that because I think. I think what people see is, of course, you know, when you are in the in the public eye and when you're、mm -hmm. in the public sphere. But I think there's so much that goes on when it comes to the building of the foundation of not only your career but who you are. You know,、mm -hmm. the amount of work and the amount of, I guess, the the introspection to some、yeah. degree that that it takes to discover yourself and to and to to have it translate so that you know your playing becomes an extension of yourself. Oh yeah. You know, it doesn't it doesn't sort of, I guess, as you say, like you know. Um, it's it's a total focus on just that you know on、mm -hmm. the sort of performance aspect of oh you know and the professional aspect of that but rather it becomes an extension so that you know you as a being you know knows who you are to to a certain extent and、mm -hmm. you know is healthy as well、yeah. and comes at it from from I guess the right the right mindset you know、um, mm -hmm. yeah no I, th I think that's that's really wonderful I think I, I definitely resonate with. With when you say that、uh, you prefer that you learn certain pieces at the age of twenty five or upwards, you know, in a sense. Of course, I'm I'm twenty three at the moment. Oh, but... so young, like a baby <laughs> right now. Oh my god, I wish I were twenty three、yeah. right now. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, but you but you you look absolutely great. Actually, you don't look you know any any、uh, any older than you were when I saw、oh. you. And also, actually, seriously, I mean that it's the lights, you know, it's the camera, probably. <laughs> <laughs> it's the invi invisible makeup, you know. But、uh, no, I think I,、yeah. I mean even just like relative to, relatively speaking, I also、mm -hmm. resonate with that because it's like when you, when you come to explore, when you come to, to form your interpretations, when you yourself, as a person、mm -hmm. or as an artistic identity, I guess is、yeah. is more fully formed. You know that can really,、um, yes, I mean certain things, perhaps certain things stick more when you learn、mm -hmm. young. It's easier to memorize things. But at the same time,、Definitely. I do think that you're you you when you learn things at a later stage, you immediately come into it with more flavor, with、mm -hmm. a much immediately, I guess, a stronger idea, a stronger character, and、mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I guess for me, it was, you know, the funny thing about this whole you know whole thing was、um, subsequent, I guess,、mm -hmm. to to the experience,、uh, the menuin experience was.、Mm -hmm. Having to find that character, having to find that, you know,、um, with the sort of pressure of expectation,、yeah. you know, having become just oh, thirteen years old and suddenly yeah, thrust into a world very difficult. That yeah, uh, yeah. and uh, you know, then suddenly you have to sort of everything goes much faster、mm -hmm. in terms of you know having to to of course keep up with your standards, keep up with other people's standards. Yeah, and, yeah, and、uh, but also just to find yourself.、Mm -hmm. And、uh, you know that I guess、um, that pressure,、mm -hmm. or I guess that you know that has been a truly integral, I guess, to developing who I have become. You know,、yeah. in a sense, you know. Sure. 
but I think in terms of, I think we can, we can both speak on this in terms of the menu and experience. For mm -hmm. me, it was, I think the best, the best possible experience, you know, oh, for yeah. me to, to By far introduce, for me I too. guess, yeah, you yeah. know, because it was so positive and so open. friendly, everybody's yeah. so friendly. And yeah. uh, I don't know if you are, I mean, obviously um, I still, I'm still in touch with some of the former competitors and, you know, uh, even though we, we come from different cities, different countries, actually, um, uh, we, we actually still talk from time to time. And um, I think it was just, you know, so supportive, everybody and, and people actually look at each other's performance. We mm. actually wanted to learn, like I, yeah. I went to look at your performance in the final. And uh, I was like, you can always learn something in a performance. And I, I never feel like a competition should be like, I wanted to be first, you want to be second. And, and plus, you know, honestly, a lot of uh, great violinists and great artists, they didn't win first prize. Some of them didn't even make to the finals. You know, I can give you a lot of examples, but I think a, a competition shouldn't, uh, a, a winner or a prize shouldn't define who you are or yeah. shouldn't even change the way you play. If you believe in certain things, I think you should just keep on the same path you've always been, um, you know, believing in. I think this is the most important thing I've learned. And then obviously, you know, for, for us, maybe people would say, okay, because we, we won. So it's, it's easy for us to say, but the things, you know, I, I didn't win everything every time I go to a competition. Sometimes yeah. I got second, third. Sometimes it didn't make to the final. Exactly. Sometimes I didn't even pass the uh, the DVD round. Yes, that happens. I'm not gonna mm. tell you which one, but uh, yeah, it happens. <laughs> same same it, for me. Man. It's same it's me. not even it's not even a major one. Yeah. Believe me, believe me. It was like yeah. So yeah. Anyway, same for so, me. so so I'm sure. So it's like you know. So people see those success, but they didn't know that there are times that we just didn't make it, and yeah. we just have to keep going and believe in ourselves, right? Yeah. 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 No, absolutely. I think the, in that sense, it's like you know, you only see the tip of the iceberg, oh, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. and and there's so much that, that that goes on with it. But I think yes, of course. I think in the end you know, uh, the art, of, I guess, you know, the art form, the art that we practice, mm -hmm. you know, should be an extension of us, I think. And oh, that, uh, you know, sure. none of these, I think, you know, whether it's prizes, whether it's, you know, the, the I guess, the outside ambitions, mm -hmm. even that is not, not as important as yeah, yeah. really, I guess, developing who you are and being happy, mm -hmm. being, you know, content with who you are, yeah. you know, and, and I think that way that uh, it's, it's it's like that, I think, how we mm -hmm. can fully speak with an authentic voice. Yeah, you know? and, and in yeah. that sense, I, I can also just, you know, come back to the, the theme of Menuhin, Yehudi Menuhin, Lord Menuhin. I think he is really kind of my, my childhood idol, and mm -hmm. I grew up listening to his recordings. And I had a chance to um, listen to his live concert in Beijing, actually. Really? Um, wow. It was like towards the very end of his life. Um, he was playing Brahms concerto, and uh, wow. and actually, I, I also recommend this to a lot of people. It's like when you listen to uh, like a great performer, like like Menuhin or Heifetz, maybe it's great to start with the late later recordings and then mm -hmm. move backwards, because then you you realize it's it's actually a miracle. So you realize, okay, so this is human being, and then when you go earlier, like the earlier. Heifetz and Menuhin recordings, to me, it was just out of this world and just humanly impossible, both musically and technically. Mm -hmm. The clarity, the speed, and it's just, I don't know, uh, the system, well, all yeah. of a sudden it was like, it's not human, but it's hard to just jump right into it. You have to have sure. a certain curve. Yeah. So I think I remember my favorite recording of, of Yehudi Menuhin was uh, the Elga Concerto. I think he oh, recorded when he was, what, 16, maybe? 16, yeah. yeah. Oh my God. How could such a young man have such personal voice? And also the slide, the vibrato, the sound, the depth, the tone. If you close your eyes, it sounded like a 70 year old man. Mm -hmm. 
such vulnerability and soulfulness. I just, I couldn't imagine that I'm, I'm listening to, to that. So it still remains as my favorite recording um, for, that, for, for, yeah. for that piece. Um, what's your favorite recording of Yehudi Menon? Well, I would say definitely that one stands out. Mm -hmm. Because it's just such a it's such a miracle of a of a document, you know, just like oh, some yeah. a sixteen year old coming and then, you know, then you hear the anecdotes, of course, of of Elgar sort of not wanting to rehearse and being like, oh, okay, this is all this is all going to be fine, you know, <laughs> and 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 here comes Menuhin and he just absolutely, you know, it's from those kind of recordings that that made me believe that you know, violin in particular, I guess, but the violin in, in hands such as those. And mm -hmm. those of Heifetz and of oh, yeah. Strach and of Schering and Devas and all those people you can name, mm -hmm. uh, that the violin can be can embody something so almost ethereal in a way. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. and that that brings us to a completely different place and a different time, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, is uh, can transcend itself in that way. It just becomes such a how. The, the the dimension the realness mm -hmm. of the sound that comes out and it's almost as if it was emotion or it was you know yeah it was emotion personified it was emotion yeah. embodied you can almost um, touch it yeah exactly yeah, it was yeah. completely palpable yeah and uh it's because of that that i think i always go back to you know when i listen to to violin i would you know i couldn't resist but to go back to those Recording. Me too. Yeah. Me too. You know, I, I feel like that it the, the world is different right now. Even though we're talking about ten years ago, I, when I, when I grew up, you know, I, I always listened to those CDs, um, and I, I feel like nowadays because of social media and um, everything, it's changing so quickly, and you almost have too much information every day, yes. and the attention span is very short. Like, exactly. what's mm -hmm. the what's the lens maximum lens for Instagram? video it's like, oh, it's a, like minute. a minute yeah a minute yeah. yeah but you know that's that's not even enough for you to even listen to the beginning of something right and also to dig into something but back into the old days people would just sit there and listen to a record i mean for for for, for the entire afternoon and there is certain calmness of it and you you need that calmness sometimes to really yeah. understand certain things it's almost like reading a book of course, you can choose to watch a movie with the same book, maybe, you know, but it's different. I think you have more yeah. room to think about certain things and to digest. And um, it, it works that your is imagination a, as well. Oh, yes, for sure. You know, it, it, it forces, in a way, you to, to open mm -hmm. up your imagination, to imagine things as you would, mm -hmm. you know, and it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful, the way it, it simulates the mind, you know, yeah. I think that's... Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and you have to take time for those things as well, mm -hmm. you know, because then it's, it's those kind of moments of, of stillness, of, 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 of uh, introspection, mm -hmm. of intense definitely you know, um, study, I guess, that, that really sometimes reveal, <laughs> you know, things to us that, that, you know, we wouldn't have known otherwise, you know, mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, ah, yeah. okay. Well, yeah. uh, it's been so much fun catching up with you, Kirsten. It's been great, you know, to, great yeah. to catch up with you as, uh, too. Uh, so, yeah. I, I still can't believe I, I, <laughs> when I'm listening to your very low and sexy voice right now, I still somehow in my mind, it was still the 13-year-old Kirsten come up to me and said, hey, what's your name? And with that <laughs> cute voice, you know, I, I think I still have that image. Um, you know, somehow in, <laughs> in my eyes, in front of my, my eyes. And uh, I think you were, you were telling me, you know, you can speak a little bit of Cantonese, but I don't speak much Mandarin though. That's, I mm -hmm. remember that mm -hmm. famous sentence. And I was like, I wasn't even trying. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, uh, you, you were definitely in character. And uh, you know, oh. if, if, I, if I have a chance, I would, I would still, if, I, if time travel is possible, I would go back and experience that again. It was just so much fun, you know. Yeah, and well. and also, I wish we had more time to hang out. But you know, every day we have something, to, yeah. to you know, the competitions and the round one, two, three, and the gala. And then after the gala, I just go and next thing, right? So, it's so difficult. I mean, I feel like I'm starting to build some friendship, some bond with all of you guys. 
and by the time you started to feel something, you have to say goodbye. And yeah. it's just, it's, it's, it's That's in a way heartbreaking, case. right? It's, it's, you yeah. wanted to build something, but then there's, there's absolutely no time. Yeah. So, yeah, so I think I, I think I definitely cherish those memories. And thanks. Oh, for me too, as well. Yeah. I think, yeah. uh, you know, all I remember is that when I, when I first met you the first time, of course, I saw you play mm-hmm. on the big screen monitors as you, as you did me. <laughs> Uh, you know, um, Big screen, but, but safe today. I just, I, I remember, you know, the first time I met you, I was struck by how authentic and how humble you were, you know, I mean, oh. even just outside of the, the immense personality and the immense energy that you brought onto the stage, that you were always, you know, incredibly friendly, incredibly gracious, and, uh, you know, a gentle personality, uh, well, you know, I, I as you are now, as you are now. That's the Confucius you know? theory, I guess. I grew up with, you know, you always, you know, um, yeah, I mean, there is always things you need to learn, you know, never yeah. be content with Absolutely. yourself, I guess. You know, I always go back to my root and see where I come from. And I definitely um, try to sustain that and also pass it on to my students, you know, yeah, um, I think that's a, an important quality, and I'm sure you will echo that. So you met so many great artists in the world, and you always notice one thing is that they feel like they're they're, they're always so humble. And yeah, you always feel like they're already there, but you know they are still learning and they're still yeah. absorbing new ideas every day. So yeah, I think why shouldn't we do the same thing? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I think that's what makes life interesting, huh? Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, the life goes on, you know. And yeah, uh, exactly. nice. yeah well, Violin Channel. Yeah. Um, Thank everybody, you so much to uh, Violin Channel for shout having out us. to Violin yeah. Channel. Yeah, I mean, and absolutely, to, give us the, the chance to actually just catch up. To catch yeah. up. Yeah, I mean, exactly. I mean, I, right. I feel like we just can't stop talking, and because you know, there's so much. To there's discuss. so much that we could talk about. Yeah. I know. So yeah. yeah, sorry if we talk too long, but I think um, that that shows you know how much. We miss the stage. We miss each other, and yeah. we also miss live music. I, I I can't wait to get back to the stage. Uh, in fact, I'm actually performing in LA for a virtual audience, mm-hmm. uh, a Beethoven concerto. So I mean, I I I really hope that um, this pandemic will be over very soon, and uh, yeah. we can make beautiful music together. We played some jazz Bach. Sometimes. we did actually yeah in beijing right i still that was remember another, that another, it was another really thing. really so much fun and i think you know we should do more collaborations in the future Absolutely. so yeah violin channel hmm, yeah. thank you hopefully yeah. next time you will see <laughs> us not only talking but also playing <laughs> playing and hopefully in yeah. person as well you know, yes yes cool. yeah is, yeah uh, you know but uh, thank you again to to you oh and absolutely. thank you thank to... you Thank you to Valen Channel. Thank you to Menu and Competition, of course, yes, yes. for being the organization that it is. You know, shout outs to Gordon Back. Shout outs to the whole team. You know, uh, it's been a, it's been a, a wild ride. And, yes, yeah. I, I would absolutely echo those, and I uh, would like to say good luck to all the competitors uh, next year, 2021. Um, I think it'll be in Richmond, uh, mm-hmm. USA, which is yeah. very close to me. And um, uh, I, I just can't wait to listen to all the wonderful competitors, um, artists, young artists in the world um, to share their music on the stage. And um, yeah, I think that's the best way to celebrate Lord Menuhin's legacy. And I think um, this journey will go on. And um, we are just very lucky to be here and witness all this happening. Yeah, absolutely. Well said, man. Well said. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Absolutely. More soon. All right. All right.